the previous example showed that when you add up mutually independent Poisson random variables, you get a Poisson random variable. So the question is, when you add up random variables that are in one particular family, does it always stay in the family? And from this example right here, you'll find out that the answer is no, that is not true. So here's the example. Let x1, x2 up to xn be mutually independent random variables with xi having the exponential distribution with parameter lambda for i equals 1 to n. So one slight difference here is every one of these uh, x values, x sub i values, is identically distributed. They all have the same distribution this time rather than lambda changing from one exponential to the next find the probability density function of the sum. So the question here is when we add up exponentials does that stay exponential and as you'll see below the answer is no. Since xi is exponential lambda the moment generating function of x sub i is and this right here is just taken from chapter 5 when the exponential distribution was introduced m sub xi of t is lambda over lambda minus t for t values less than lambda and that is the moment generating function of x sub i. The moment generating function of the sum of the x sub i's is so m sub y of t is the product of the moment generating function that product is going to be that same moment generating function remember they're all identical so they have the same moment generating function when you multiply those together, you get lambda divided by lambda minus t raised to the n power for t less than lambda. Now at this point, you then take this function right here and go to table 7.1 and you look to see if there is a distribution that matches that moment generating function. And fortunately, there is a distribution. It turns out that the Erlang distribution matches that. So this is an Erlang lambda n random variable, which means if you just simply go to the Erlang distribution and write down its probability density function, that looks just like this. And so there is the probability density function of the sum of n iid exponential lambda random variables, and it has the Erlang distribution. Finally, this is the last example in the chapter. So I encourage you to look at uh, more of the examples that are given into the text. We only went up in general to two dimensions on our transformations. Those go up to n dimensions and also take a look at some of the non one-to-one -one transformations.